Welcome to Israel. Why is the Middle East important? We Christians are the Notzrim, according to most Jews today. We are the watchers on the wall. Our purpose as members of the Commonwealth of Israel is to serve and protect God's people. After the formation of the world, God enacted a plan, and that plan began in the Middle East at the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. And that plan concludes in that same place. The context of the entirety of God's plan begins and completes in and with Israel. There is no denying that, nor refuting it, if you are a Jew or a Christian, and the anthropological evidence verifies it. For the purposes of this podcast, Israel is both a nation and a people. Welcome back, fellow Notzrim. It's so good to have you with us as we pursue the uh, goal of Israel. Why is the Middle East important? It's never been more important for us to talk about this subject. And I can remember when we first started this uh, journey, uh, Neil and I, uh, and we were sitting in the coffee shop and and, uh, talking about, you know, Israel as we did a lot. And then I said, you know, Neil, we should do a podcast about this. It's so important, so important to us. And then we just started doing this podcast and we started in Genesis 1. And, you know, you can check all those shows to get the background that's necessary to really understand understand what we're discussing here but uh, all the way back to to uh, to Genesis and and we were we, we were talking about it and it became uh, amazing because uh, Hamas attacked Israel and all of a sudden it's everywhere and we've been talking about it for two years so uh, if you really want to understand all that's going on with this uh, phenomenon begin in Genesis 1 we take you through the whole process and so uh, here, here we are with you right now and you are the note stream you are the watchers on the wall. You Christians, you evangelical Christians, me, I include, I include myself as one as well. I'm an evangelical Christian who loves Israel, and I am a note stream, and Neil is a note stream, and we are the watchers. And th- they are so grateful for us that we're praying for them, that we're, that we're praying for the peace of Israel. It's such a wonderful thing. So today we're going to turn our attention to the thing that happens at the end of every single podcast. And every single podcast we do at the very, very end, there's a wonderful uh, blessing that's sung by Uh, Paul Wilbur. Paul Wilbur. I couldn't think of his first name. (laughs) Paul Wilbur, who's a, a wonderful man of God. And, uh, he speaks, he, he sings it in, in Hebrew. And that blessing is from numbers. I want to give us some context about numbers. And so Neil and I are going to have a discussion right now about uh, what's going on here uh, regarding this passage before we get to the actual blessing. Okay. So Neil, we were just talking a little bit about the fact that the Bible books names are different in Greek and Hebrew, right? And Genesis in, in Greek means beginning, right? So what's the Hebrew word for that? Uh, very similar. If it's Greek, it means beginning. It's Bereshit. And it means? It means in the beginning. In it the means beginning. The beginning. The beginning. Right. And the second book in, of the Bible is? In Hebrew is called Shemot. And that is? And that is like, um, oh, Shemot would, it's not like the English Exodus. It's more like um, maybe you would say names or something like this. Shemot. Interesting. So Exodus, Exodus in Greek is the way out. That's mm-hmm. exactly. That's literally what the word means, the road out. And so that's the story that the Greek uh, gave it, okay? But it's interesting that it's different, right? And then the next book is... And then the next book, so we have uh, Bereshit, then yep. you have Exodus, yep. then you have uh, Bab Midbar, which we're going to talk about. Which is... And that is uh, in the desert or in the wilderness in, or something like okay. that. We call it numbers. And we call it numbers. Right. Well, how uh, this is very interesting that they're this different, right? Very interesting to me. Just different. Yeah. And then we have Vaikra. Uh, we call it Leviticus. Mm. That's the fourth book of the mm-hmm. Bible. Mm-hmm. I hope I have these numbers right yep. in, in in an order. Yeah. Uh, Vaikra or Leviticus, and the last book is called Devarim or Sayings. It would be translated, and that is Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy and right. Deuteronomy in Greek means second law. That's what the word Greek, the Greek word means, second law. So it is Moses retelling the law to a large degree. But it's interesting how, how we've uh, changed, first of all, that we changed the names from Hebrew. 
why we did that? I can't think of another reason other than maybe we wanted to make it our own. Yeah, I don't know. There's a pause there for effect. Sure. Maybe the church changed the names for a reason, but I hope not. hope it wasn't to make it our own, because it's not our own. It's everyone's, right? Okay, but that's interesting. So so the, the passage we're talking about today is numbers so i was i was reading the uh, it's in uh, chapter uh, 6 okay is where we're going to be we're going to be in chapter 6 and in verse 22 through 27 is where the priestly blessing or the priestly benediction is that god gives aaron to pray over israel right right it's it's not a it's not a blessing for the priests it's a blessing for the sons it says were the children of israel the, the descendants right 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 and we are grafted into that that's exactly right we are grafted into that so we it's a blessing for us now right as well right it's, not in place of but is as well and that's the, and it's imp, that's a very important concept jeff to understand is that there are many direct promises blessings sayings to Israel, but because we are part of Israel, we're not Israel, we're not Jews, as you point out many times, yes, yes. we are watch men or yep. watch women, either yes. way. Uh, Sentries, guardians. W- yes. But the, the fact is, we are able to apply these very specific blessings, mm-hmm. if you will, to Israel, mm-hmm. to our lives as well. In other words, they don't, they didn't, didn't disappear. They didn't dissipate because in yep. 70, the, the Romans did X and so, like you pointed out many times to yep. the temple, and yep. so therefore that's all gone. No, there are many, many applications, secondary, tertiary, and so on down the line that you can apply to yourself mm-hmm. in your own life. Mm-hmm. Why? Mm-hmm. Because you believe in mm-hmm. The God yeah. of Abraham, Isaac, yeah. and Jacob. That's amazing. So, in in this in this book of Numbers that we're going to be talking about today, where this blessing is, when I was when I was reading, when I was looking at the, the context of it, the, the verses before, because I always try to do that. God is speaking uh, to Aaron and the other about uh, the the Nazarites, the the people the, the people that were uh, uh, from Nazareth, where Jesus was from, right? Uh, and and uh, he's talking to them about uh, ceremonially how they should prepare themselves and separate themselves and consecrate themselves uh, before they uh, assume their priestly duties. And it's very specific what they do. And after that's done, after he talks about that, it, it says, then the Lord said to Moses. Right. Okay, so he's he's given them all these instructions in in, in uh, chapter six, and then he says, "Then the Lord, which is the word for Yahweh, there, right? It's not Elohim; it's God Almighty, or what? Uh, how would you? What would be your? It's the ineffable name that traditional Jews, traditionally, and even not so traditional Jews, will not speak that name. They won't for, speak the name for effort for for fear that right. they would mispronounce that name. And my 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 Jewish friends say Hashem, the, the, which means the name. The name, right? So uh, so tell Hashem, tell the name. Yeah, pray to the name. So the Lord uh, Yahweh God, you know, said to Moses. Tell Aaron and his sons, okay? Tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. So the word Israelites there is sons of Israel or children of Israel or, yeah, it's that's, that's the term. It's translated Israelite in this translation. Maybe in yours, folks, it's, it's that way. But you need to understand, it's talking about the, the descendants of, of Israel or Jacob, right? Uh, Say to them, and then he begins this wonderful blessing, and the blessing is so rich, and I've listened to it many times, and when Paul Wilbur sings it, I cry every time, and there's a a new, a new version that's coming, that, that has come out about this, uh, this uh, blessing, and I can't, I'm I'm not doing justice to the person who, who sings it, and I'm not going to make a mistake, so just trust me, folks, that that video will also be available on our website and you will just it'll just rock you it'll knock your socks off the blessing that god says to moses he says tell this to aaron 
okay? And it's because they're getting ready to go into the promised land, right? They're, they're, they're close. They're getting ready to go in. Is my right about that, Neil? Is that, is that correct? Yeah, they, they weren't going into the land quite yet when he gave them all these instructions. Yeah. But you are exactly correct in that he said, this is how you will basically we'll get to that but put my name on israel this yeah, is how yeah, you yeah. will seal them yeah so it's a it's it's a it's that kind of a moment you know where 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 the lord is skip, telling moses to instruct aaron to do this okay and this is how you are to bless the israelites or speak well to them or or give them uh, impartation uh, from me say to them may the lord bless you and keep you May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance toward you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. So that's the, that's the instruction that uh, God gave Moses and Moses is to give Aaron, okay? They will put my name on the Israelites, on the sons of Israel, on the sons of God, the sons of, of Israel. They will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. So Neil, uh, this, is the, this is a critical point, put my name on them. Right, right, correct. Uh, in other words, uh, God was telling Moses, this is how it's done. Mm -hmm. And that uh, function of the priestly blessing or Aaronic benediction as it's known by various names, um, it kind of morphed over time in that uh, the high priests, certainly by Jesus' mm -hmm. day, they formed their hands mm -hmm. in the shape of a, the Hebrew letter shin, mm -hmm. and and they would raise that up over them, and their tzitzit would, of course, be lifted up, and their, their garments would be lifted up as they raised their hands. So shin uh, it appears in another word doesn't it? That's important. Shin is a is a Hebrew word that starts with uh, Shaddai, El Shaddai, which many, most Christians are familiar with, mm -hmm. Shaddai. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, written on the most mezuzahs that are the on the door of any entrance to homes or mm -hmm. rooms mm -hmm. have a shin. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a three-part letter mm -hmm. like like a w almost mm -hmm. uh that the jews will see as they walk into a room or a house that's the mezuzah mm -hmm. that's what they would raise over when they impart this blessing on the israelites they would put their fingers in that shape to, mm -hmm. to form the shape of a mm -hmm. three-part blessing if you will mm -hmm. a, 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 a shin I'm, I'm doing that now you can't see it but i'm doing it as best i can it, it looks great it, folks. you, would you, see, you yeah. can't see it we, we'll take a picture of it and show it to you we'll post it on facebook so you can see it but go ahead so that is what they would do they would lift their hands up and that's what we say you know when we get there we'll say that jesus would have and mm -hmm. did definitely mm -hmm. do the same thing because mm -hmm. he was intimately familiar mm -hmm. with these mm -hmm. concepts from torah why would he not right you know why would he not do that right of course he did it right of course he did it yes yes it, it's sort of like if 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 you said to me pray for me yeah. well of course I know enough yeah. about Christian prayer mm -hmm. that I'm going to pray for mm -hmm. your sickness, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus was a Torah-observant Jew. Mm -hmm. he, he even asked, what, which, which one of these laws did I violate mm -hmm. that you're killing me? And they said, none of these laws, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's because you equated yourself with God. That's what caused his death. So, you, you, you say, I'm a Christian, and that's great, but... Uh, Jesus was a Torah observant Jew in the first century who was intimately familiar with especially this ironic benediction or priestly blessing that Moses said, tell the priest, tell your brother, this is how you seal, this is how you put my name on the Israelites. Jesus was a Nazarite, right? So he <laughs> followed the consecration that we just discussed that I just discussed at the beginning, you know, that's what God is giving this to Moses about how the Nazarites will separate themselves and consecrate themselves and the way they wear their hair and what they do and how they sacrifice and so forth. It's a ritual that, that is a purification ritual for the Nazarites. Jesus would have followed that. He didn't, he didn't, wasn't exempt from that, was he? 
Well, uh, th- that's probably 100% correct. Uh, in other words, we don't know exactly what he did, as we discussed right. before. Right. There, there were Nazarites in the Bible who yes. were born Nazarites. Right. There were Nazarites who took a Nazarite vow for mm-hmm. a certain period of time. And that's what he talks about in chapter 6. God talks about the vow. There, there, mm-hmm. were, there were different mm-hmm. ways of mm-hmm. saying, I'm going to take this vow. Mm-hmm. But then there were certain requirements mm-hmm. that if you took the vow, either because you were born into it or as we believe Jesus was, or if you took a vow for a certain period, for a certain reason, you could do it for, I don't even know, mm. a week or two mm. weeks or mm. whatever, mm. who knows, a month mm. or a year yep. or something. Yep, yep, okay. All right, so so may the Lord lift up his countenance toward you and give you peace. So each line of this blessing, folks, is uh, matters to me personally. Uh, when, when I hear Paul Wilbur sing it, it just... It floats me. It just lifts lifts me out of my chair. So I, I hope that's what you get. If you if you if you listen all the way through to this broadcast at the very end, after the ending is over, it comes up, and I'm going to play it for us right now, so you get a feel for what it's like. And never ever forget this. It's a beautiful, beautiful blessing. <laughs> Okay, that was uh, Paul Wilbur. Wilbur, sorry. Where is he now? Well, he comes through the area. He's uh-huh. he's definitely got his ministry, and he's he's older now, mm-hmm. like all of us, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But still singing, still blessing, wow. still doing things. Such a such a golden throated voice, just an amazing voice. So God sealed is what we were. That was the point we were making before, Neil. That God sealed Israel with this. And let's talk about that. Right. Sure. So the sealing is the the fact there are many places, and this is one where there's the three-part blessing or prayer or invocation of God uh, on people, on Israelites. Mm -hmm. Uh, Israel was his chosen nation and is his chosen nation. And as you point out many times, many ways, and I encourage you to uh, do that, is that we are part of the commonwealth. And Mm -hmm. we always say, look, if... uh, people were part of the commonwealth of britain when it was a major player they were canadians but they were part of the commonwealth if they were australians they were australians but they were part Part of the the commonwealth Commonwealth. if they were new zealanders they were kiwis but they were still part Part of of the the commonwealth that's right commonwealth and that's what we have we are part of the covenant and part of the commonwealth as it's as it said by israel but there are many three-part blessings and this is one of the three-part blessings uh, that we have that God specifically said to Moses, tell Aaron, this is how you do it. This is how it's done. And God sealed them. And if we look up that, it's very important to know that whole issue of sealing and being sealed comes up hundreds and hundreds, generations upon generations later in the book of Revelation when John has his vision of being sealed and talks about them and writes things down and we get to look at that and say hey this is this is a god concept you seal them and just like if you read the book of revelation it does talk about our enemy the 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 beast he also has a seal that he puts on his people mm. he seals they them they call the mark of the, the beast the mark of yes. the beast but he yeah. seals them yeah. it says anybody yeah. who hasn't got his seal yeah. on their armor forehead right. so right. god also seals his people yep and uh, he promises that he will protect and bless. And, and uh, a lot of times, you know, maybe certain Christians don't understand what blessing or protection mm-hmm. means. It doesn't mean from all harm or mm-hmm. all adversity right. or all difficulty. Right. Not at all. No. We can look at many people who say they were blessed, Joseph being the foremost. Mm. He was blessed when mm-hmm. he went down into Egypt, right? And they mm-hmm. carried his bones out of Egypt. Mm-hmm. But 
he was in prison for 17 years at least, so at least. it wasn't, you know... Yeah. Uh, unjustly, unjustly, unjustly. Yes, exactly. So again, yeah. it, it's it's quite a yeah. thing, and and yeah. we have to keep that in mind. That while I am sealed mm-hmm. and I am under the power of God, some mystical way of invocating God's sealing on my life, on anyone's life, mm. the name of God is on you. But it doesn't mean you are now free from all trouble, tribulation, and problems in your life. So, uh, folks, we'll post these, of course, uh, Revelation 6, 9, Revelation 7, 2, uh, and Revelation 9, 4 are examples of the seal. Uh, so just, just to make sure that you understand that. And Paul, Paul talks about it uh, in Ephesians, I believe. Uh, it says, uh, uh, Ephesians 1, 13, he says, And in him, that means uh, God, And in him, having heard and believed the word of truth, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. That's correct. Yeah. So that's, that's go ahead. That, yeah, no, that's, that's exactly right. Ephesians talks about sealing of the Holy Spirit. And yeah. God says, this is how you yeah. put my name or how yeah. you will seal or sealed or sealing. And and we see it in John, and we see it in Second Timothy, where Paul again talks about sealing or, or yep. being sealed. Yep. So uh, the idea of putting your name on Israel, yeah. thus us, yes. anybody who looks to g- the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, also can claim and expect to be sealed. Sealed. Yeah. Sealed. Amen. Amen. Okay, so that's us. Make sure you get that. I mean, I know you. I know it's not in place of. It's alongside. It's with. Right. The the new covenant is for Israel, and we're we're part of that. We're part of that. So uh, so the uh, the the sealing or the uh, the mystical invocation of blessing and protection by putting God's name on the Israelites. Uh, it's precisely uh, how it begins. May the Lord or Yahweh bless you and keep you right that's exactly right may the lord bless you and keep you only the father can do that and that's important that's the first of the tripartite blessing if you will may the lord yahweh god the father bless you and keep you and it's important jeff i'm just going to digress for a second to say uh many people have pointed this out you might talk about your phone Mm. you might talk about your car Mm -hmm. you might talk about anything that's made up of many parts but it's still a car it's still a phone it's still some apparatus (laughs) and you call it that and that's that's why the lord i think went to such extremes to point out to to record for our purpose our our benefit that may Yahweh bless you and keep you. That can Mm. only be what's called for our benefit, the Father. And then we go to the second, may the Lord uh, cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And that's the second part of that tripartite blessing. Okay, so a tripartite is three parts, It's three parts. So the first part, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The second part... The second part is, may the Lord, or may Yahweh, as, as you pointed out at the beginning, cause his face to shine upon you yeah. and be gracious to you. Yeah. And that's so important because we literally have it recorded in Scripture in Matthew where uh, Jesus went up to this Mount of Transfiguration. And, you know, that's another thing we can debate or discuss where was the Mount of Transfiguration and so on. But his he literally transformed where his face shone Mm. They, his, his, it beamed. It, mm. it radiated. It, mm-hmm. it, it had this halo mm-hmm. effect mm-hmm. that that was very scary. Much like Moses when much Moses, like Moses came down. When from Moses mountain, came down. Right? Yes, exactly. And the gracious part. May the Lord, may Yahweh, cause His face to shine upon you, and be gracious. gracious. Well, that was the whole reason mm. that God, Jesus, was manifested in this human dimension at all through a woman born of a woman in the traditional way Mm -hmm. so that he could bring grace yeah amen 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 say some more about that you know that's a powerful statement what you just made that he was born through a woman to bring grace that he was born to bring grace in other words god knew that he gave moses for a period of time Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. and he gave the law which which the bible says is good Mm -hmm. only christians and people in in times past have have tried to portray being under the law as something negative when when god says it's a good thing it's healthy it's graceful it's because of grace if it weren't for grace you wouldn't even know your error 
Jesus came eventually uh, in in the generations to come because God said, it's, it's above mankind to do this. I'll mm-hmm. have to do it myself, mm-hmm. in effect, and I'll have to reverse the curse, as, as it's called, reversing the curse. I'm going to reverse... As Mike, Dr. Michael Heiser says, I'm going to reverse Mount Hermon. Mm. All the all the mm. difficulties that came from that, I'm going to reverse it all. So he does the opposite, just like we talked about a minute ago about the beast in Revelation. Mm. He also seals his people. Mm. So uh, mm. God mm. seals his people. Uh, Jesus wants to reverse the curse. Well, the curse came on all the people. And God wants to reverse that. So that is an act of grace. So he literally, in the second stanza, the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, he caused his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And that was the act of grace that he did. And that seal is what protects us during, uh, you know, or or those who, I don't want to get too controversial here, but uh, protects us or whoever is present during the, the tribulation. Protects us from harm. Protects us from harm, and uh, again, we 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 uh, we we do want to emphasize. At least I do that. That doesn't mean you will face no adversity. Right. That you might not have to choose living or dying. But just as King David said, and just as uh, the, the New Covenant says, uh, it's better for me to go and be with the Lord mm. than be here. Mm. And King David said, uh, whether I live or die. Mm-hmm. Now, this wasn't hyperbole. Mm-hmm. He he meant these meant things it. when he said yeah. them, whether yeah. I live or whether I yeah. die. Right. Right. And, and, and he wrote these psalms that mm. I, I will praise you, whether I live or die. Mm-hmm. And some of us, this is a hard message, you're right, we may, we may be here. We may not all be raptured. I know it's much nicer to say a, a rapture theology, but we may be here and we were being uh, conditioned to say to ourselves, what am I also willing to do? What, what am I willing to do? What, as best yeah. as I can. As best as I can. Are, am I prepared? Am I ready? Either way, right? Either way. So, uh, and then the third part of the tripartite blessing, tripartite right. blessing, Neil, is may the Lord lift up his countenance toward you and give you peace. Right, correct. So, what does it mean to lift up your countenance on you? What does that mean? Well, if if you see a stranger and you lift up your head to them, you recognize them. You know who they are. I'm not just saying, oh, it's a neighbor who lives on the corner. Mm-hmm. And I have, I've never seen them. I don't know who they are, but I know there's a house because I see smoke coming out of it, uh, the chimney every once in a while or something like this. No, I lift up my countenance. I know you. And it, uh, you've and it been says, sealed. Uh, it says toward me. So it's not just lifting up his countenance. It's toward you. Right. And give you shalom, which yes. that word, as we've discussed yes. many times, includes peace, but it mm. includes so much mm. more than peace, mm. which mm. goes back to the idea of Maybe for some of us, it may may require a commitment, and nonetheless, it doesn't mean you're free from all difficulty, you're free from all tribulation, because Yeshua, when he came in the first time, he specifically said, in this dimension, in this world, in this snow globe, you will have, you will have tribulation. Trouble and tribulation, right. no doubt about it. Okay, and then the last part, as, as we've already discussed, is... Uh, so they shall put my name, this is Aaron and the priests, so they shall put my name on the Israelites, and I will bless them. And I will bless I them. I will. It doesn't say maybe. It doesn't say might. It says I will bless them who have the seal or the name, the seal on him, right. on them. Right, and and that's what's so hard for us as as uh, as human beings, but certainly as believers, is oftentimes you are being blessed, but it's not blessed according to the way I want it, or the way I expect it, or the way I'm looking for it. Yep. Uh, but God says, "I recognize you. I mm. will lift up my face mm. upon you. Mm. I know you. Mm. I recognize you, and I mm. will give you a blessing. I will give you shalom. I will give you peace." But sometimes we go amiss because we in our own mind maybe argue with the devil and we've pointed done shows in the past where once you do that you've lost the minute you allow your anger your internal mind to start wandering and to say well they did this and they did that or whatever you take your focus off what it needs to be focused on entirely especially in our day and it's not easy to do it's not easy but you've lost 
because that once you st- get your focus off he'll lead you down a road that will eventually he will say indeed indeed has god said and yes. that's what he said to, to uh eve, to eve yep. in the in the garden yep. that that she yep. engaged this yep. thing and, 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 and the thing it. was far more powerful yep. far more yep. witty far more yep. uh, capable uh, capable yep. of 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 an entity yep. than humans are yep. far more powerful far more. Yep. and so we have to somewhat say hey i'm going to stay within my own lane as people put it they stay in your lane and I will keep my focus down the road as it will and I'll keep it on Jesus and we have many verses and we've done shows on that too what am I going to think about and the moment you find yourself wait I'm mad at this guy or that guy or they did me wrong or they did this all of which could be true but the minute you do that rest assured the enemy is there and there's a very viable and real enemy it's not just psychological Mm -hmm. it's a real entity Mm -hmm. and they are willing and able and capable of saying let me take you further further Mm -hmm. further further before Mm -hmm. finally you're like i'm upset Mm -hmm. and i'm going to go that direction and i'm justified and all of these things whereas the blessing is that third part of i'll put my seal and they will have shalom amen amen so, folks, uh, that, that concludes this show. It's been uh, awesome to, to share this with you. Uh, we hope you play every show to the very end so you can get that blessing for yourselves. And uh, you will not regret it. It lifts me up every time I listen to it. So until next time, folks, shalom. Stay tuned for a special Hebrew blessing at the end of every episode, including this one. This has been a great discussion. I look forward to how it continues to unfold. As you can tell, Neil and I enjoy talking about the subject as it helps us to get to the root of the matter about God and why Israel and the Middle East are so important. Thank you for listening to this podcast, and we would love to hear from you. Visit us at our home at podbean.com. Israel, why is the Middle East important? That's podbean.com. Israel, why is the Middle East important? And you can find us any place great podcasts can be found. And you can find us on Facebook using the same title. And you can email us at why is the Middle East important at gmail.com. That's why is the Middle East important at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. And if you like what you hear, please invite your friends to the conversation. You know, one thing Neil and I always say to each other is, I don't know, because it is by having an opinion yet holding it with an open hand that we continue to grow. Shalom. See you next time. Wait for the blessing. Hello. Oh.